What's good guys, it's your boy Mookie here from Mookie Plays. Today I'm bringing you guys a Gem Knight vs Shadal gameplay video and um, <laughs> this is probably the most sacky I've ever had when playing Gem Knights. So he wins the rock, paper, scissors and actually makes me go first. So what I do is I set the karma cut um, and activate an absorb fusion. Oh, and by the way, I will have a deck profile for this up later on. But I set karma cut, activate absorb fusion to add a Gem Knight to my hand. Then after that, I activate Brilliant Fusion, which is probably the best card in the deck, which allows us to bring out our Gem Knight Lady Brilliant Diamond, who's the new uh, Gem Knight Fusion that is absolutely broken. So after we use Lazuli's effect in the graveyard, we allow we're allowed to add a Gem Knight Tormali back to our hand. And then I just decide to normal summon it and set. Now the reason why I did that and I didn't decide to use Lady Brilliant Diamond's effect to blow this up and bring out another Gem Knight is just because... I'm going first, right? I don't know what my opponent's playing. I don't know what's in their hand. For all I know, they could have a Rageki. I set up, I re they Rageki, and my whole field is gone. So I don't want to overcommit. I still have some resources in my hand just in case if things go wrong. So he summons the Mathematician. Now at this point, I'm already expecting Shadals. I'm expecting like a Light Sworn. I'm expecting Clown Blade. <clears throat> but the good thing is, is I know that even if he wants to attack into my Lady Brilliant Diamond, I have the Karma Cut in hand, which I can ditch the Obsidian and I can plus off of it. So I feel pretty safe. But he decides to ditch the Shadal Dragon to destroy a Spire Trap. So I'm like, okay, shit. Uh, he's playing Shadals and he's going to destroy a Spire Trap anyways. He could have destroyed the Brilliant Fusion, which would have destroyed this, but he decided not to. So I just go for the simple Karma Cut. Remove that from play. He uses his normal summon for the turn. I get a City and Shards Plus to special summon another Gem Knight. And all he has is a Book of Moon. So far, so good. So now I'm going to go ahead and use her effect. Her effect allows me to tribute Tormali in order to bring out another Lady Brilliant Diamond. Then I go ahead and get a Gem Knight Fusion. Use that effect again to bring out uh, Lady Lapizuli, which allows me to burn for another 1500. Then I use Lazuli's effect in the graveyard to add another Gem Knight. Then I Gem Knight Fusion again to bring out Citrine, who allows me to attack without activating any spells or traps on my opponent's side of the field. Now, all they have, all he has is a Book of Moon, so he could Book of Moon, but it doesn't really matter because even if you Book of Moons, I'm going to swing for game. So, yeah, that's GG. <laughs> that, that was like the most sacky I've ever, you know, had with Gem Knights. And the thing about Gem Knights is... You either win really quickly or you lose very quickly. Like, the deck is has a huge amount of, not luck, but consistency is a problem. But when that consistency hits, you can pretty much just go off. And the deck is a lot more consistent now than it was before, obviously. Now that we have some more support for it. But it can still be better. So I'm still playing around with the ratio, still trying out new cards in it. But yeah, this is just one video. Um, I'll send you guys, not send you guys, I'll upload to you guys the deck profile for this a little bit later. So stay tuned.